Hey everyone, thanks for tuning back into my YouTube channel. Got some pretty exciting stuff coming up. Get to fish with an old friend of mine. I haven't fished with him in years and years, and that's primarily because we both fish the tour. This is somebody that's really well known within the uh, professional bass fishing ranks, and that's Bassmaster Classic champion Takahiro Amori. I met Takahiro when I moved here in 2001 and we got to know each other after I made the Elite Series in 2007. We both camp, we both have Lance truck campers, and we've followed the circuit, the Bassmaster Elite Series over the years, and we would camp at different RV parks and different things like that, and we got to know each other really well. And of course, during this quarantine period, we actually have some free time. We actually have some time like most everyone does, and we're actually gonna get together in the boat on our home lake, Lake Fork, here pretty quick. I live about 30 minutes from Lake Fork, and as you know, I do some guiding if you followed my YouTube channel. Takahiro used to guide on Lake Fork years and years and years ago. He doesn't fish it hardly ever because he's never home, kinda like me. Um, the only times I really guide is in between events and in the fall. And we're actually gonna get on the water, spend some time together in the boat. We may catch a pile of fish, we may catch you know, very few, but we don't know. We're going to have a good time, and that's where I want to invite everybody to, to kind of be a part of this. This is kind of an exciting deal because um, I want to just extend the invitation to let everyone have a chance to ask Takahiro a question. So that's what I'm going to title this video and the next video. This is Ask Takahiro. So go ahead and put in the comment section any questions that you might have for Takahiro and I'll ask him on the water. I'm gonna choose 10 of those questions and I'll ask him on the water and um, we'll see what he has to say. Anything about, you know, personal life, fishing, rods, reels, tackle, his favorite way to fish, favorite lake, biggest bass, all those types of things that you may not know but wanna know about Takahiro. This is our opportunity to kind of get, get the good stuff out of him. So go ahead in the comment section, put your questions that you would like me to ask Takahiro. I'll sit down on the water and we'll go ahead and and go right through those questions and get them answered. So I'm really looking forward to getting on the water with Takahiro. It's been a long time, like I said. We're gonna have fun and looking forward to hearing what, what kind of questions you all have so I can share that with him. The next thing I wanna talk about is frog fishing. In the spring, the spawn and the post spawn is one of the best times to throw a frog in my opinion. It's just, uh, it's such a, an effective technique at pulling fish out of those areas, those shallow water areas, in and around cover um, without getting right up close to them. You can cast it and make a presentation and, and really uh, get some explosive strikes. So it's, number one, it's a lot of fun. Top water is one of my favorite ways to catch them. Frog fishing is one of those things where I feel like it's super important, like a lot of techniques, to have the right rod reel line, the technique specific rod for that task. I know we can't all have a technique specific rod for everything that we do, but I really believe that with, when it comes to frog fishing, it's important to have a rod that you dedicate to that so that you can increase your hook to land ratio. And I wanna go over the one that I've been using. Number one, starting with the rod, I like a seven foot two heavy power fast action. Some guys are going seven foot six, some guys are going seven foot. I feel like the seven foot two is the, is the, uh, the best all around length for me because a lot of times you're kind of working the rod with some twitches down towards the water so too long of a rod kind of hit the water surface i really like the seven foot two i feel like that's a that's the perfect length gives me a little bit more length especially with fishing around heavy cover and um but at the same time i can work that rod like down towards the water surface and keep the line on top of the water so seven foot two heavy, I like a heavy power rod. Number one, setting the hook on a frog like this with these heavy hooks like that, you definitely need a, a rod that can bring the power to the fish so you can bury those heavy gauge hooks into the fish's mouth. So it's real important to have a heavy action rod for that, but also to compress that body so you can expose the hooks. It's that compression of the body when the fish has got it, it all takes a lot of power. You have to exert a lot of force in your hook set in order to do that. So that's, that's really critical. A lot, of set, a lot of heavy power rods can be somewhat stiff. You want one that's got some tip action because with a frog, I think it's critical 
to have great lure placement and be able to present the, mat, the bait in a manner that's going to be attractive to the fish. So I want something with a little bit of tip so I can skip it under bushes, so I can lay it up between the bank and logs and stumps and buck brush and any kind of fish holding cover, grass, gator grass, weeds and different things like that that the fish are going to be around this time of year. So it's important to have just the a little, you know, the rod tip, but also the power to set the hook. So those are the things that make this, this rod, I think, favorable for frog fishing. One of the reasons I've settled into it for what I like to do. It's got wind grips, which I like that because it's, you know, you really got, it's, there's a bit of tackiness. It's not going to slip out of your hands. And this is actually out of their, it's called their Magnum grass rod. And it's got the wind grip butt as well, because if you set the hook and you get yourself in the belly or something, that also uh, makes that nice and soft because it has a foam butt on the on the hand, on the the end there. And then um, the reel, I like a fast reel. A seven five to one gear ratio, I've played around with eight to one, and I think either one of those would be great. I may be gravitating to the eight to the one, eight to one, but the reason I like a fast gear ratio reel is because a lot of times you're working that frog around the shallows and you set the hook and he runs right to you for deeper water. So you gotta be able to pick up that line really fast and apply that pressure so that the fish stays pinned. Sometimes when we set the hook, it actually buries the barb and you've got him. But there are other times when you hit him and he's coming right at you or there's slack on the line or something like that. Maybe there's a bow in the line while you're working it because of wind. And so when you set the hook, it doesn't get it penetrated all the way. So you need that reel to pick up the slack and apply pressure while the fish is fighting with the heavy power rod to really keep that fish and the hook penetrating through and into the fish's mouth. Sometimes the hook set doesn't get it done, but it's actually the fight and the resistance of the fish that actually gets the hooks buried. So that way you don't get him to the side of the boat and he doesn't come off. Fast gear ratio reel is critical. Sorry about the wind guys. Hopefully that doesn't come through in the video. So for that, I'm using a Team Lose Custom Pro, and last is the line. A lot of guys are gonna try to get away with fluorocarbon or mono, and this is why a dedicated rod reel line setup is important with the frog. I really believe braided line is the only way to go. Mono has too much stretch, fluorocarbon sinks. Braided line not only floats, but it has little to no stretch. And when you're, again, compressing a frog like that, and then also burying those heavy double hooks into a fish's mouth, the, the lack of stretch that braided line has makes it critical and key for overall success whenever I'm frog fishing. So that's really the setup that I really like to use. Again, that's the Lose Magnum Grass. It's at, out of their custom speed stick light. It's a light that I like because of all the wrist action and all the movement of the rods. You wanna be able to do that all day and not be fatigued. And then obviously, the 50 pound test braided line. Some guys will go up to 65 and even 80. I think 50 gets maximum castability and I don't sacrifice any strength. Caught some really big fish on a frog. I don't feel like I'm undergunned in that department at all. But if you like 65 or 80, go for it. I say, hey, whatever works best for you, definitely do that. So that's my frog outfit. It's been really productive. It's been very effective for me. It's helped me boat and land some really nice fish and I've having a blast with it. If you're considering getting a dedicated frog rod for that specific technique, take those things into consideration. I think it'll really make a big difference for you. I know it has for me. So the other thing I wanna talk about is I've got 1,750 subscribers and I wanna thank everyone for, for, for subscribing and for everyone for viewing my videos. I hope you're getting a lot out of it. If you like this video, please hit the like button. If you haven't already subscribed, please do that. Share this video. Until next time, good fishing.